Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmencita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes NBS a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. To ensure that newborns are truly healthy, they must undergo newborn screening, a public health program that helps determine if a baby is born with one of the more than 20 congenital disorders. Its importance cannot be overemphasized. If any of the congenital disorders are left undetected and not managed immediately, it can lead to mental retardation and even death. It was integrated into the public health delivery system with the enactment of Republic Act 9288 or the Newborn Screening Act of 2004. Now part of the PhilHealth's newborn care package, newborn screening is being offered in more than 7,000 hospitals and birthing centers nationwide. It has also saved thousands of children. This educational series is intended for health professionals who deliver services of the newborn screening program. Whether you're online or offline, this program aims to further enrich your knowledge in newborn screening and be able to apply the highest quality service to Filipinos, especially during the challenging times. We will discuss the very process of newborn screening from the moment the baby is born and into the continuing care available for newborns found positive. We will also zero in on the features and management in each of the conditions included in the newborn screening panel. We will also interview patients as well as their parents and in keeping up to the challenges, talk over how facilities and centers manage to give quality service despite the limits brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. This program is the newest educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators. One in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. We also hope that this series will also benefit the health professionals, physicians, nurses, midwives, med techs, as well as students in the health professions. So take a seat, get comfortable as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. <laughs> Good day to all. Welcome to the 12th episode of Newborn Screening in Focus. In this episode, we will learn that the newborn screening program goes beyond the screening and diagnosis of particular disorders. The long-term follow-up of patients is indeed needed to assure that a patient diagnosed with a particular disorder is given the appropriate treatment and care management. This will help provide a better quality of life for our patients. So today, we will look into the role of the Newborn Screening Continuity Clinics or NBSCCs and the Centers for Human Genetic Services, CHGS, in the delivery of care to our patients. Currently, there are 15 NBSCCs strategically located throughout the archipelago. They serve as ambulatory clinics for patients diagnosed to have disorders in the ENBS panel. These clinics facilitate the continuity of care of confirmed patients in their area of coverage. 
due to the full implementation of expanded newborn screening in 2019, the CHGS was established to facilitate comprehensive clinical management and genetic counseling services and other treatments not readily available locally or commercially. There is one CHGS serving every main group of islands, one in Luzon, one in Visayas, and one in Mindanao. And there are plans to establish other centers in the near future. Noong September 2019 ay nakumpirma ang aking anak na si Isa Marcela na kauna-unahang bata dito sa Pilipinas sa kondisyong tyrosinemia type 1. At kami po ay nagpabalik-balik sa Maynila para po sa kanyang gamutan at konsultasyon sa mga doktor sa PGH. At dito po, ipinakilala po sa akin ang continuity clinic dito sa Region 1, ang ITRMC. At doon ko po nakilala si na Nurse Vanessa Mabalo at si na Doc Ivy Rose Acosta. Sa ngayon po ay dalawang taon na po silang nakaagapay sa amin sa lahat po ng pangangailangan ng aking anak. Tungkol naman po sa medikasyon at management ng aking anak, um, sila po yung nagiging instrumento para makarating po ang mga gamot at mga formula na kailangan ni Isa. Sila po yung tumutulong sa akin para mabilisang maiparating ang lahat ng aking concerns at mga katanungan sa mga doktor na nasa Maynila. Yung wag pong kakalimutang tumawag agad sa kanila kung halimbawang magkaproblema po ang aking anak or may kakaiba po siyang nararamdaman. Ipinapaalala po nila yung mga dapat kong gawin gaya po ng pagpapakuha ng mga laboratories ni Isa, biometric at mga bilang o sukat ng mga iniinom na gamot at gatas. Ganon din po sa paggawa ng food diary ni Isa para po sa kanyang food diet. Kaya sa awa po ng Diyos, maayos na maayos po ang kalagayan ng aking anak ngayon sa tulong po ng continuity clinic dito po sa Region 1. Sa mga magulang po na kagaya ko na may mga anak po na may kakaibang kondisyon, huwag po tayong mawalan ng pag-asa. Hanggat maaga po, makipagtulungan po tayo sa mga espesyalista para po maagapan ang sakit ng ating mga anak. Huwag po tayong matakot. Kaya dapat Joining us in this episode are two geneticists, Dr. Michelle Abadingo from the Newborn Screening Reference Center and currently the National Long-Term Follow-Up Coordinator in charge of the continuity clinics nationwide. We also have Dr. Leah Hamoy from the Institute of Human Genetics, who is also a metabolic medicine specialist. Welcome to the episode, uh, Dr. Mitch and Dr. Leah. Good day po everyone. Good day everyone. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. You know, our topic today is very important for our coordinators because these are two um, parts of the program that have been recently implemented. So maybe let's start the conversation. And uh, let's start with Dr. Mitch. Dr. Mitch, what is a newborn screening continuity clinic? The newborn screening continuity clinic assures that patients um, diagnosed with um, disorders included in the expanded newborn screening are uh, followed up. And uh, we would like to assure that these patients um, have optimal growth and development. So um, it is not enough that uh, these uh, patients are screened for disorders included in the panel. Uh, what uh, our role in the continuity clinic is to assure that um, we optimize the growth and development of these patients. So, so Dr. Mitch, how does a patient get into, uh, you know, into the continuity clinic? So um, the newborn screening centers, uh, they have uh, short-term follow-up teams and the short-term follow-up teams um, help establish the diagnosis of uh, these patients. So they uh, assist 
in uh, doing the confirmatory tests needed and they also start to connect these patients to um, the recommended or the needed specialist. Now, once the diagnosis has been established in the short-term follow-up, uh, the patients is the patients are now endorsed to the continuity clinic for uh, long-term care. Okay, so just for the benefit of our viewers, uh, the long-term, uh, the short-term follow-up is actually assigned to the newborn screening center. So in other words, when a patient is found to have a positive screen, the newborn screening center is in charge of uh, recalling the patient, doing the confirmatory testing, and closing the case. So only patients with a confirmed diagnosis are actually moved to the newborn screening continuity clinic. Okay. So, thank you, Dr. Mitch. Let, let's uh, move on to Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee, what is a Center for Human Genetic Service, Services? So, the Center for Human Genetic Services are um, centers that are being established in different areas of the country. So, we already have one in Luzon. We already have one in Visayas. We're establishing one in Mindanao. These are centers that have um, specialized care. So, not just um, doctors, but other health professionals as well. And they're there to assist the continuity clinics in the long-term management of the patients. And for the benefit of our viewers, the, the setting up of the Centers for Human Genetic Service is really very, is, is very recent. And I, um, it's supposed to assist all the continuity clinics in the management of the cases. So in other words, it's a lifetime care and we need to have a lifetime supply of uh, our specialists to be available for our patients. Let, let, let me go back to um, Dr. Dr. Mitch, tell us about the composition of your continuity clinic. Okay, in terms of personnel, the continuity clinic consists of a pediatrician and a full-time nurse. Now, the responsibility of the pediatrician or the long-term follow-up head is to uh, give anticipatory guidance to these patients and also the long-term follow-up head also connects uh, these patients to the needed specialist. So, for example, in a patient with MSUD, the um, long-term follow-up head um, connects the patients to, um, not only to the clinical geneticist but also to a uh, developmental pediatrician, to the nutritionist in the um, center and um, also uh, to re rehabilitation medicine for um, early intervention program. Okay. So, so what, what we are hearing from, from Dr. Mitch is that the management of a patient uh, consists of a team effort. And most often, our patients do not have a direct access to the specialist. So the example that she gave is maple syrup urine disease, which we actually discussed uh, uh, a few uh, webinars back. And it is not enough that you have a pediatrician, but you will need a metabolic specialist as well as a developmental pediatrician and even a nutritionist. So I'd like to see the connection now between a continuity clinic and a center for human genetic services. So how do you connect to this setup, Dr. Leah? Okay, so let's think of the continuity clinics as their um, long-term primary care. So like in other countries, they have their GPs, for example, or here as well, we have our um, long-term doctors. But our doctors in the continuity clinics or our teams in the continuity clinics actually need some guidance um, from metabolic specialists. They also need access to other healthcare professionals such as the specialized metabolic dietitians, for example. So CHGS provides that um, um, support that much needed support to our doctors to make sure that anytime they have any concerns about the management and to ensure that the proper and the best management is being given at the level of the continuity clinics so dr Leah, can you share, can you share with our viewers the the composition of a center so a center has the experts in terms of genetics and metabolism so we have our geneticist metabolic specialist um, we also have 
doctors from the other fields that are involved in newborn screening. So right now we have our hematologist as well as we are also screening for hematologic conditions. So aside from the doctors in the Center for Human Genetic Services, we also have the other healthcare professionals who are also very specialized and are experts in their field. So for example, the genetic counselors, and we also have trained metabolic dietitians who take care of our metabolic patients. Aside from these medical experts, we also have a social worker who serves as a patient navigator. Now, because the social worker is at the center, um, he is also tasked with capacity building for the continuity clinic. So we can't expect the social worker to be able to go into the details of each and every patient. But through capacity building, we're able to access um, social work needs for all of our patients and um, we have this entire team working together and not just limited to one area of the country but for the entire Philippines. Thank you Dr. Leah. So maybe let's uh, for our viewers now let's let's pause and take a look at the whole system again. So we have the newborn screening uh, coordinators for all the facilities that's that's basically the, the people watching us right now. Then we have the team at the newborn screening center who is testing and making a final diagnosis. And this time what we're hearing from our two guests is that uh, once a patient is positive, they they are turned over, the, the patient is turned over to the newborn screening uh, continuity clinic for long-term care. And the continuity clinic now uh, is going to be assisted by the Center for Human Genetic Services. Okay, so um, in terms of composition, let's let's review again. The newborn screening center would have med techs, doctors, the, the panel of experts. The, the newborn screening continuity clinic has a pediatrician and a nurse, okay? And then we have our Center for Human Genetic Services, which would have a, a geneticist, a pediatricians and family physicians, uh, we also have genetic counselors. Uh, you forgot the pharmacist, Dr. Leah. Uh, we have our a social worker and um, the metabolic uh, the metabolic uh, nutritionist, as well as the, the different specialists. If, if you look at what's missing in this whole discussion, um, integral to this discussion will be the role of the the centers for human genetic the centers for health development the chds the doh regional coordinators because somewhere you will have to get connected and as we've heard from uh uh one of the webinars the the doh is a very important link uh, to make this happen so today we're just talking about the long-term care of the patient so let me just share with our audience that as a rule, and if you look at, I mean, all over the world, the role of newborn screening is primarily just to do the screen. And as soon as they finish doing the screen and making a diagnosis, they're just, with, they're just uh, uh, the patient is under the care of either the pediatrician or the university hospital or whatever hospital they're connected with. But what we've realized in the Philippines is that we don't have that 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 established network to take care of these highly specialized cases and hence the setting up of the continuity clinics as well as the the centers for human genetic services so i think by this time you're seeing the big picture uh, and we are really uh, we, we want our patients to um, we want our patients to make sure that uh, they are cared for lifetime now I, i'd like uh, both uh Dr. Mitch and Dr. Leah to give us an example of in terms of management on your role. So I'll start with Dr. Mitch first in terms of management and then maybe Dr. Leah can add on, uh, you know, how if you can give an example to our viewers, how do you connect no, in terms of real management of a patient? I'll start with Dr. Mitch. Okay, um, as an example um, for uh, 
the management of a patient. So we've mentioned earlier that um, once a diagnosis has been established, uh, the patients would uh, be endorsed to the um, long-term follow-up to the continuity clinics. Now, um, as uh, Dr. Leah mentioned earlier, uh, we serve as the uh, primary care physician, physician of these patients. Now, uh, there are regions here in the Philippines where um, we only have a few specialists. So, uh, for example, in um, the Mindanao region, we only have one clinical geneticist. So, what the continuity clinic does is that um, he or she uh, refers the patient to the specialist. Um, he or she connects the patient to the specialist to make sure that um, the patient is being uh, monitored for his condition. And uh, as you mentioned earlier, Dr. Padilla, the involvement of the CHDs, uh, the CHDs also play a crucial role in the management of our patients. Why is that so? Uh, they make sure that um, the patients are um, adherent to the given treatment. They give um, assistance to the patient um, for example, for our metabolic patients, they provide uh, the newborn screening cards, the newborn screening monitoring cards. Also, uh, one of the purpose of the CHDs or the um, Centers for Health Development is that they also help the continuity clinic connect with the local government units. Now, um, for in our case here in Metro Manila, uh, some local government units also provide uh, financial support or medical support to our patients uh, diagnosed to have a disorder in the newborn screening panel. Um, so aside from the clinical geneticist, um, the um, pediatrician in the long-term um, follow-up also connects the patients to um, the other um, subspecialists uh, needed um, in the management of the patients. So what I would like to reiterate is that uh, this is a team effort. Uh, the management of our uh, patients diagnosed to have um, a disorder in the ANBS, ENBS panel um, is a team effort. Uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Mitch, and, uh, and highlighting you know that the, the, the pediatrician is the team captain. As a, it cannot, it's really the, a pediatrician who organizes all of this, and that's why we have a pediatrician on board. And just to mention that uh, all our all our continuity clinics are actually in uh, government hospitals. Uh, they have been chosen by the Department of Health, nominated, nominated, and uh, the the hospitals accepted the challenge of becoming a continuity clinic. So let's move on to Dr. Leah. Dr. Leah, can you uh, expound further? Okay, so. Um... Although we're lucky that we have um, several geneticists already serving different parts of the country, it's still not enough, but somehow we're growing in number. The problem is in some areas of the country, it's the geneticist alone uh, looking into the welfare of these patients. And that's why um, the Center of Human Genetic Services comes in very handy, especially for these areas, because the geneticist actually needs an entire team to um, support the functions of uh, the genetic service. For example, accepting or coordinating the referrals coming in from the different continuity clinics is one of the main roles of the um, CHGS nurse and organizing them, making sure that we're not missing anything and then um, coordinating the care with the geneticist. So after the nurse and the um, geneticist or specialist looks into all of these cases, we also look at the other needs of the patient. For example, medical food or other medical supplies. So these are things that um, are being procured now by the Center for Human Genetic Services because one of its mandates is to make sure that we have access to these orphan drugs and orphan products. So with the mandate from the uh, administrative order of the Department of Health, we have to make sure that we are augmenting this supply. These are not very readily av available in the country. So. Um, from the name itself, they're orphan products or orphan drugs. So it's very important that there's a center that actually makes sure that we're able to procure them um, from other countries where they are manufactured. So 
taking that example of MSUD. It's not enough for us to provide medical advice for this patient because medical advice will get you nowhere if you don't have the special type, specialized milk formula um, that is devoid of the leucine, isoleucine, and valine. So we have to make sure that we have these products and we have to make sure that we distribute them properly to the continuity clinics with the patients that need them. Thank you, Dr. Leah. Maybe you can share with them how we distribute the, the medicine. But just one point from, from, from uh, Dr. Leah's uh, sharing. Um, the Institute of Human Genetic actually makes the order for the whole country because uh, it's really, it's not practical for every hospital to be ordering a can of milk or a few cans of milk. So the Institute of Human Genetics at NIH places the order for the whole country. They project what is needed and then they take care of distributing it to the different continuity clinics. So Dr. Leah, can you share with us how you send this uh, medicine and milk products to the different uh, continuity clinics? Okay, so the nurse and the pharmacist plays a huge role in this because before the first step is actually checking to see what products we actually need. So this comes from um, coordinating with each of the continuity clinics. How many patients do you have? What um, what are your patients' needs at this moment? And then we project the amount and the Institute of Human Genetics then procures the, these products um, from different countries actually so we look for where they're from, from who distributes them and we make sure that we get the best um, product at the best possible price for these patients of course and then once we get them then we we distribute them through the help of our nscs of our nbsccs our chds so uh, once again the chds play a role here again because they make sure that all of these medications reach the patients who actually need them Okay, so this, uh, just a, a reminder to our viewers, these are life-saving medicine and products, okay? And unfortunately, they are not available at Mercury. So not unless we get our act together, our patients will die. And we're, we're very fortunate that we have, we have patients who are alive now and doing well. And that's because we organized as a group to make sure that you'll be able to procure it properly and distribute. But how do you send it? That's what you can share, Dr. Leah. What is your means of transportation in sending this maliban doon sa mga ginagawa ng CHDs? Tell them and share it with them. So, traditionally, of course, we've used the um, most convenient means of transportation. We send it by courier, through the planes, or through the buses. Um, but, due to the pandemic of course and even before the pandemic actually there have been times when we actually needed to send the medications quicker um, in a more efficient way so we've had to tap our other government agencies so there have been times when we've sent medications life-saving medications with the help of the philippine air force for example there have been times where we would had to um, take you uh, to use the other transportation of the department of health for example so this is all um, a team effort with other government agencies just to make sure that the life-saving medications reach the patients on time it's been more difficult i must say with the pandemic going on with a lot of cancelled flights and a lot of limitations in transportation but through the efforts of the team and the other government agencies, we've been able to get the medications to the patients. Thank you, Dr. Leah. So if you remember in one of our episodes, uh, we had the sharing from the, uh, from I think from the new branch screening centers and also with the, with the CHD coordinators, wherein they've used the military, the military, the Navy, the Air Force, everything anybody any agency was willing to be part of the program so once again the team effort does not really limit itself to the people within within the center or within the hospital or within the program but we have agencies who have actually uh, shared their resources uh, with, with, with the program 
Now, uh, both are young in terms of uh, setting up. And if I remember, uh, for the New Prospecting Continuity Clinics, it was set up in 2014 towards the end. And then for the Centers for Human Genetic Services, it was set up only in 2019, very young actually. We're now in the stage of just getting our act together. Can you share with our coordinators, with our viewers, what are your challenges in implementing the program? Your your role as a, uh, you know, putting together the continuity clinics and then maybe for Dr. Lee, uh, the challenges for uh, for the centers. Let me start with Dr. Mitch. What are your challenges? Um, I would like to um, relate. Uh, my challenges uh, with the current pandemic. So uh, during the pandemic, uh, this was the time when we uh, strongly utilized the use of uh, telemedicine or teleconsultation in um, the follow-up of our patients. Um, I must admit that at first, uh, it was a trial and error process for us uh, because um, for our continuity clinic, for example, uh, we handled the provinces in Region 4B, so in the Mimaropa region. So uh, there are areas in the Mimaropa region where our, where uh, there is uh, difficulty in um, connecting to the internet. So um, what we sometimes do is that uh, we um, call the patients by the cellular phone um, to ask um, if they're uh, being able to continue their treatment and um, if they're um, uh, adherent to uh, the given treatment. Now, in relation also to the pandemic, uh, one of the mandates of the continuity clinic is to make sure uh, that the patient uh, receives um, his or her appropriate care for um, his diagnosed disorder. So I would just like to share a story with the group. So uh, there was a time when um, we had a lack of levothyroxine um, here in Manila and nearby Rizal. So um, we were able to find the supplier of this levothyroxine uh, for us to uh, be able to deliver these uh, medications faster to our patients, we um, asked the help of uh, private citizens and uh, we also uh, shelled out money so that uh, we could buy these medications. So um, as Dr. Leah mentioned earlier, uh, the CHD helped us distribute um, these medications. Uh, there were also private citizens who were more than willing to help us uh, distribute uh, the following medications. So again, um, what is emphasized here is the team effort. Um, we could not do this alone. Um, it is not a perfect system, uh, but with the collaboration of um, the different um, agencies and uh, the different services involved in newborn screening, um, we um, are able to give uh, the appropriate care for our patients. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mitch. Dr. Leah, what are your challenges? So one challenge is the supply of the orphan products. This was also affected during the pandemic because early on during the pandemic, the supply chain was um, um, uh, it, it went down because I mean worldwide of course so um, medical food was affected and this made us realize actually that um, we should not be reliant on um, the international supply of um, the, this medical food so at some point in the future um, we're looking forward to actually having um, the, the production of local medical food as well so we're actually already in talks already with um, um, the FNRI team for this and also um, one challenge from the pandemic was similar to what Dr. Mitch said that um, individual uh, that communication all has to be online and I actually think of this somehow as a good thing because it helped us refine our telegenetic system as well. We've had telegenetics ever since, even before the start of the pandemic. And this has helped doctors in other areas connect with geneticists and specialists from the Institute. But because of the pandemic, we were able to refine this system. So the telegenetic system is now in place. The continuity clinics refer their patients to the CHGS through online means and um, this has been very helpful um, 
and even the patients are now used to this type of um, communication. Of course, there are challenges because our uh, internet connection is not always very good here in some parts of our country. But we're um, slowly uh, being able to um, utilize it uh, very well. Um, uh, I think those are the challenges that we've had so far. And the good thing, I think, is that we're learning from all of them. Well, thank you, Dr. Lian, Dr. Mitch, you know, by sharing your challenges and then finding uh, solutions. As we always say, it, it, we, we can always find for a new kind of solution like engaging the private sector in delivering the supply of our medicine. And then uh, in the case, in both cases where in internet is a problem, all we had to do was to refine. Yes, indeed, you know, we've had telegenetics way, way before, uh, before uh, the pandemic came. But uh, this, uh, the pandemic actually allowed us to, to also show that you don't have to see the patient face to face because before, every time you need a follow up, it had to be a face to face. But we realized that there are many ways of following them up. And when, when the borders close, then we have to find a way on how to see them. Now, my last question for, for both Dr. Mitch and Dr. Leah will be, you know, if you had a chance to, you know, have a conversation with the Department of Health, what would be an ideal setup for the continuity clinics? Just how many do we need in the country? Let, let's start with Dr. Mitch. Um, according to the um, strategic framework of the newborn screening program, so uh, the goal of the program is uh, to have at least uh, by 2030, by the year 2030, um, we have at least 85% um, of the provinces uh, with um, facility for long-term follow-up for our patients. Um, currently, we have 15, um, but there are provinces that um, has um, satellite clinics. So uh, we have satellite clinics in the Western Visayas region. Um, in the Bicol region, they have a satellite clinic in Naga. And uh, they also have uh, a satellite clinic in Surigao del Sur. So, um, Hopefully, um, I would love to have uh, more continuity clinics. Um, I want to bring the continuity clinics closer to the patients. And um, aside from that, I would also like to have um, stronger collaborations with our frontliners in the community. Yes, uh, we do acknowledge that our patients do need um, specialist care, but I think it would go a long way if uh, there are um, uh, if there are um, people in the community, if our frontliners in the community help us monitor our patients, uh, it would go a long way to if uh, there is someone in the community who makes sure that the patient is adherent to treatment and uh, that makes sure that um, they are adherent to their medications. So um, basically, uh, that is uh, my wish list for the continuity clinics, uh, more continuity clinics and uh, more collaborations with the specialists and um, the frontliners in the community. And um, aside from that, I would also like to mention that um, also one of the mandates of the program is um, to train uh, more specialists, um, to train more um, clinical geneticists and uh, more um, pediatric endocrinologists so that uh, we would have uh, more specialists in the different provinces and the different regions. Thank you, Dr. Mitch. Dr. Leah, what's your wish for the program? Uh, for in terms of CHGS, we would like to have fully staffed, of course, um, CHGS in the different parts of the country. Um, for this year, we're looking at Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. But um, after this year, we'll have another one in northern Luzon and another one in Mindanao just to make sure that we're really um, able to look into each and every continuity clinic and monitor all the patients, provide them with the specialty care and the products that they need. Um, aside from that, we'd also want, of course, a sustainable um, fund to be able to um, ensure that all of the orphan products, orphan drugs are um, available to our patients. Thank you, Dr. Leah. So, Dr. Mitch, can you just give us a, the number of patients that, we are, that are being followed up in all of the continuity clinics right now? Just a, 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 a total? 
Uh, right now, we are seeing around 5,000 patients um, across the 15 continuity clinics. Okay, so medyo marami yun, okay? So, if the 15,000, sorry, the 5,000 patients are being seen in the continuity clinics, it's the same number that's being monitored actually by our, by the Centers for Human Genetic Services. So, um, before I ask you for your final message, I'd like to review our audience again. Uh, this being very new, very new um, components of the newborn screening program, the, the both the continuity clinic as well as the center, Centers for Human Genetic Services are additional components to the National Comprehensive Newborn Screening Program of the Department of Health. Uh, there's always room for growth and, involve, and uh, room for improvement and growth. And you've heard from, from both Dr. Mitch and Dr. Leah that whatever we have right now is not really enough. If we want to really uh, help our patients, then we need more more of these clinics and centers on the ground. So before we close, can I request both of you to give your final word to our to our audience who are, as I said, our coordinators from all of the newborn screening facilities in the country. Let me start with Dr. Mitch, your final message. Okay. So again, I would like to emphasize that um, uh, the goal of the program is not just to screen patients uh, with disorders included in the panel. Our goal is to uh, make sure that uh, these patients would have optimal growth and development. So um, that is our role in the continuity clinic. And um, again, um, if there is uh, one thing that I really wish that we have uh, for us to have more continuity clinics it is to bring more continuity clinics to our patients to um, assure that they are um, being monitored uh, for their diagnosed condition also i would like to emphasize that this is a team effort uh, we could not do this alone uh, we have um, we need the support of uh, the different government agencies and um, the private sector Thank you, Dr. Mitch. Dr. Leah, your final message to your audience. Yeah, so I would just like to reassure um, the continuity clinics and the um, newborn screening facilities and centers that the Centers for Human Genetics Services is here to assist to bridge the gap from the continuity clinics to the experts and to work hard to make sure that the products, that, the orphan products that our patients need will reach them. In the future, we would also be catering not just to newborn screening patients, but patients with other genetic conditions as well because they also um, need access to specialized genetic care that we're otherwise not able to provide to them. So this is also a good avenue for us to be able to um, share that expertise with people from the communities. So thank you everyone for um, your continued support to the program. Well, thank you, Dr. Mitch and Dr. Leah. Definitely, this is not the last time we're inviting you. We'd like to know what's happening probably in a year's time. Uh, we expect that we will have more continuity clinics and probably more centers for human genetic services. And we'd like to um, maybe share with the group, you know, how else, uh, you know, your continuing efforts to improve the program. Maraming salamat, Dr. Mitch and Dr. Leah. Yeah, dapat Thank you very much to our guests for today. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or you may tweet us at newbornscreenph and also include the hashtag, hashtag ENPSPH. Before we end, I want to again take this opportunity to present to you the new addition to our tools in learning, our ENBS mobile app. The ENBS mobile app is a one-stop hub for all NBS health workers on everything they need to know about newborn screening. It also features a rewards program that our health workers can use to earn points, 
and use it to claim shop vouchers with our partners. If you have already downloaded the app, answer the quiz that we will send to your inbox to earn those points. We continue to improve our services as deemed necessary by the emerging challenges through an open dialogue about our experiences in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this video series, we extend the sharing of knowledge with greater reach, empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with the newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service to every family. For our finale episode for this season, we will interview three adult patients, with two of them diagnosed through the newborn screening program. One has congenital hypothyroidism, one has congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and one has maple-seropurine disease. Tune in next week and listen to their stories and how they live their lives as a student, a professional, and a parent. This and more here in Newborn Screening in Focus. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let's realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life. Sa iyo rin to, sa kalusukan